Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to talk about the group topicity. So whenever we're talking about topicity in chemistry, we are referring to a stereochemical relationship either between the groups or the atoms in a molecule. And there are four different types of relationships that we can expect in this case. Our groups or atoms can be homotopic, they can be enantiotopic, they can be diastereotopic, or they can be heterotopic. And it's kind of difficult to understand what each of those definitions will mean if I just give you the definition itself, so instead I'm going to explain it with an example. Let's look at this molecule over here. I have purposefully highlighted three hydrogen in this molecule because those are the atoms that I'm going to be focusing on right now. These three hydrogens are absolutely chemically identical, so because of that we are going to say that these hydrogens are homotopic. I can prove to myself that these hydrogens are homotopic by replacing each of those with an imaginary atom like an X of some sort and see what sort of relationship I am going to get with the resulting molecules. So for the illustration purposes, let's say I am going to replace one hydrogen, the top hydrogen in my first molecule, with an X and the middle hydrogen hydrogen in the second molecule with the X. As we analyze these two molecules, we can see that there is absolutely no difference between those. If that X, let's say, was a bromine or a wage group or anything else, that would not make different molecules, so because of that those hydrogens are identical to each other and we refer to those as homotopic hydrogens. Now let's look at the same starting material at the same initial molecule, but now instead of the hydrogens of the CH3 group, I'm going to focus on the two hydrogens in the middle of the molecule, these two guys. If I do the same trick like in the previous example where I take my hydrogens and replace them with an X, I will end up with the following pair. And if we compare these two molecules, we can see that they are actually enantiomers of each other. And since the two molecules that I have ended up making by replacing my group of interest, my hydrogen with an X, are now enantiomers, we are going to say that the hydrogens that we had there to begin with, they are enantiotopic. Now, let's say I'm going to look at my starting material again, but now I'm going to look at these two hydrogens. Well, in this case, doing our common trick with the replacement with an X, I am now going to end up with these two molecules. And if we look close at these two molecules, in this case the connectivity between our atoms is not even the same. So from the relationship perspective, these two are the constitutional or structural isomers. And since there is no stereochemical relationship between those, we are going to call these hydrogens heterotopic. And heterotopic is always going to mean that there is no relationship between our atoms or our groups of interest. Now, when it comes to diastereotopic groups, things are a little bit more interesting, so I'm going to use a slightly different example. Instead of a carbonyl, I'm going to use a chiral alcohol, and I'm going to look at these two hydrogens in the middle of the molecule. So now, if I'm going to do my trick with the replacement, I'm going to get these two molecules. Now these two, the stereochemical relationship between these two guys is going to be diastereomers. And because the molecules after replacement with an X are diastereomers, the original hydrogens themselves are going to be diastereotopic. So as you can see, it is fairly easy to assign the uh, group topicity, either the groups are homotopic, enantiotopic, diastereotopic or heterotopic, for as long as you can assign your stereo descriptors and you can assign the stereochemical relationship to your molecules. Let's look at a few examples to make sure that we solidify this. In my first example, I'm going to look at the topicity of the two highlighted hydrogens. So my first step is going to redraw my molecule, replacing one of those hydrogens with an imaginary X group. And the first thing that I want to check after I have my molecules is whether the molecules have the same connectivity. So in this case, connectivity is the same, so my atoms are not going to be heterotopic. The two molecules are not the same, which means that they are not going to be homotopic either. So that means that they are either going to be enantiotopic or diastereotopic to each other. So then I'm going to check for my normal stereochemical checks 
First of all, are the molecule mirror images? They are not mirror images of each other. Are they superimposable in space? And no, they are not superimposable in space either. Which means that the two molecules with my X, they are diastereomers of each other. And because my molecules with an X are diastereomers, that means that my original hydrogens are going to be diastereotopic. Remember, we don't need to have chiral atoms in order to have diastereomers. The definition of enantiomers and diastereomers only deals with whether the molecules are mirror images and if they are superimposable in space or not. So anything that fits that definition will fit our stereochemical relationships. Like in this case, we do not have any chiral carbons, yet our molecules diastereomers, and because of that our hydrogens in the original molecule are diastereotopic. Now, for my next example, I am going to check the topicity of the chlorine atoms. So, like in the previous case, step number one is to draw my molecule, replacing one of the group of interest with an X, giving me the following two molecules. If I analyze these molecules carefully, I will see that in this case they are actually identical, because I can easily make one molecule into another one via a simple rotation around the vertical axis. And because the two molecules that I ended up making after the replacement with an X are identical, that means that my chlorines in this molecule are homotopic. And for the next example, I am back to comparing the hydrogen atoms. In this case, as always, I am going to start by redrawing my molecule, replacing my hydrogens with an X, making the following pair. Now, here, comparing these two molecules, I can see that they are enantiomers, which means that the original hydrogens are going to be enantiotopic. So, as you can see, the algorithm is always going to be the same. Redraw your molecule replacing the group with an X, see what kind of relationship you have between your molecules, they can be completely unrelated or constitutional isomers, that's going to make heterotopic groups, they can be identical, that's going to make homotopic groups, they can be diastereomers, which are going to make diastereotopic groups, and finally they can be enantiomers of each other, which are going to make enantiotopic groups. Now, that seems like a very obscure part of stereochemistry, why would we even bother with that? Who cares? Well, the reason why we should care about the group topicity is because that is extremely useful in the spectroscopy, specifically in HNMR. If our groups or atoms are homotopic or enantiotopic, they are going to give you the same one signal in the HNMR. So, for instance, if I look at this molecule, then the three hydrogens that I have on my first methyl group they are going to be the homotopic, which means that they all collectively going to give me one signal. The two hydrogens on the next carbon, they are going to be enantiotopic, so they are collectively going to give me the second signal. The next two hydrogens are also going to be enantiotopic, so they are going to collectively give me the third signal in my HNMR. And lastly, the last three hydrogens on the last CH3 group in this molecule, they are going to be homotopic as well, like the green ones, and they are going to give me my last signal in my HNMR. So HNMR will not be able to distinguish between the hydrogens in the red group or between the hydrogens in the blue group or between the hydrogens in, let's say, my green group. For the NMR purposes, hydrogens within each group are going to be identical. However, if we have heterotopic groups or diastereotopic groups, they are going to be different in NMR and they are going to be giving you different signals. So, for instance, if I look at this vinyl chloride, these two hydrogens are going to be heterotopic, these two are also going to be heterotopic, and finally my blue and green hydrogens going to be diastereotopic, which means that this molecule is going to give you three unique signals all hydrogens in this molecule are going to be different from each other. Here is another nifty example where you can see the same type of a deal. If I look at the two highlighted hydrogens in this molecule, they are diastereotopic as well, which means that they are going to show up as different signals in HNMR, despite the fact that they are sitting on the same carbon. So this way, if you are ever not sure whether your hydrogens or maybe carbons going to be the same or not, you can easily assign whether 
whether they are hetero, diastereo, enantio, or homotopic, and if they are homotopic or enantiotopic, then they are going to be the same in the NMR, and if they are heterotopic or diastereotopic, they are going to be different in NMR, and this way you will easily know whether the groups are going to give you one signal or if they are going to give you multiple signals. And since heterotopic and diastereotopic atoms, they are not the same, they are going to also show the chemical splitting between each other. So the highlighted hydrogens in my last molecule, these two guys, they are absolutely going to split from each other, however ridiculous that might sound. Because normally we don't see hydrogens sitting on the same carbon splitting on each other, but since these guys are diastereotopic, they absolutely will do so. And that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you think about the group topicity in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and let me know in the comments below which type of a relationship is your favorite one, or maybe whichever you hate the most, I don't know. Subscribe to the channel for more organic chemistry updates and tutorials, watch this video next, and I will see you next time!